an old English folk tale, Lady God. It was Christmas in 1057. Several years previously, her Leofric and his wife had come from Shropshire to take charge of the city. But the Earl didn't get out much and knew little of contemporary affairs. The lady of the house, however, was well informed of the city's flagging culture. Her heart was in the right place, but because of her husband's preoccupation with aesthetics, she sometimes had difficulty in getting through. He adored her, she knew, couldn't stop fucking her and called her Lady God, but his insane addiction to fine art was clouding their marriage. It pleased her that on occasion, while swooning in bed, the name of some great masterpiece would often fall from his lips, and at first she had taken his semi-conscious murmurs as compliments. But when, en route for orgasm, he began panting, Moan, Lisa, you fucking bitch! in her ear, it dawned on her that he thought he was fucking his paintings. When she confronted him for fucking her like a bit of canvas, he was astounded. Is there another way to make love? he asked eagerly. Oh, my darling, you were so ebullient with creative ideas. Without your insight, I would never have thought of the sculpture. She had to make him realise that she was really here, and not just some scroll of his imagination. So she attacked from a social angle. Because of your excessive taxes, there is great stress in the city. The people are so poor they have nothing to do but lie about starving for drink and drugs while you wallow in me without a thought for your poor subjects. If you don't help them, nobody will speak to us and we'll be sent to Coventry. Now the Earl knew that they had arrived in Coventry several years previously, and he was pretty sure they were still here. But at the moment he was preoccupied by scrutinising a bus by Fragenard, and couldn't imagine how he could be sent somewhere that he was already at. Yes, my love. Working from the premise that women have to take their clothes off to be heard, his wife threatened to ride naked through the streets of the city, if he didn't reduce the taxes, stressing that the base creatures that dwelt there would be able to drool forever over the sacred parts of her body that only his eyes had ever been privileged to behold, and shame them with lewd remarks whenever they went out. Of course, my love. At that time, chamber pots emptied from the windows above played a large part in Coventry's culture. The sodden thatch of straw that covered the roofs of the houses was not unlike that covering the heads of the inhabitants thronging the crowded thoroughfares below. When they heard of a protest, all the good folks of the city scuttled inside their hovels and closed the wooden shutters of the windows as a mark of respect for the heroic lady. A great silence hung over the city. The hoofs of a snow-white stallion rang loud in the unearthly stillness. It was traditional for ladies to ride side saddle, but she was determined to show as much of her delights as possible and kept swinging her legs over and swapping sides. Enhanced by a single lock of hair coiled round each nipple, her buxom breasts bobbed delightfully as she swayed back and forth, and she was slightly saddened that the poplars were not witnessing her blatant expose and the flagrant direction of her horse. She was passing the window of a low-life drinking den when Peeping Tom, the landlord, threw open the shutters like a flash of Mac and with a lewd belch presented himself to the flabbergasted lady. Faced with a throbbing erection, gnarled and veined like the trunk of some great oak, Lady God was touched by the bravery of Tom's exhibition. The sheer brass balls of the guy flashing her right out front when all the other men in town were looking through cracks in the woodwork with their wives wanking them off, sent an electric quiver through a quim, and obeying a spontaneous impulse, she dived from the saddle and impaled herself upon his dripping member. When she arrived back at the mansion, early Efric was in shock. You rode naked through the streets of Cobb on that horse, he gasped. Why did it take so long? I got gridlocked amongst the traffic as the people rushed away, 
so as not to look upon my flawless beauty. She thought it less trouble to fib, rather than explain how the sight of Tom had levitated her from the saddle and propelled her upon him. The very thought of it brought back the vivid experience and the desire to turn tail and repeat it. It looks like it's about to snow, Leo gasped desperately, pointing up at the perfectly clear sky. See those dark clouds that look like the buttocks of a Rubens? Get something to cover her up, he whispered out the side of his mouth. Almost instantly a handmaiden was by her side. Mink, sable or ermine, my lady. Lady God saw the opportunity and took it. I would rather go naked than wear fur, she snapped, and trotted off with her tail in the air. I do like a bit of posh, said Tom afterwards. That was an absolute blinder, Lady God. You are a right diva. The name stuck, and forever after, the Saviour of Coventry was known as Lady Godiva. <laughs>